What was it like teaching blacks in the 1970s? Next, here on the Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you joining with us. Last week we were, I always say last week, sorry about that. Last interview we were introduced to Cindy Allred, and today her delightful husband, Dave, is joining us. So, Dave, thanks for coming and sharing. And well, thank you. I guess I just appreciate your story, well, you, you and Cindy's story so much because it seems like it's just a repeat of my story or it's the same kind of a story. It's just a wonderful commitment to the church and then all of a sudden, boing, <laughs> something we happens. We actually <laughs> watched your 17 minutes oh, and you did? we thought, wow, that's kind of like us. Oh, is that right? So, yeah. Well, where, are you, where were you born? I was born in Nampa. Idaho. Now how far is that from Caldwell? That's a stone's throw away. Is that right? So yeah, Cindy's parents and our my parents knew the same people, but they didn't know each other at the time. Yeah, but it was very young when you eventually were in the same ward and yeah. sound like yeah, you played she, baseball was, and all that stuff. I was 13, stuff. she was 12, and when I saw her in her backyard hanging clothes, I believe it was, <laughs> I thought, that's the girl I'm going to marry. You really did. Yeah. I've heard those stories, but yeah, and you did. I did. Yeah, she's it's been a, wonderful. She's a delightful, delightful lady, and so you were born into an active family too. Yep. They were all active yep. LDS. Uh, had two brothers. There was three of us, and parents went to church. Um, yeah, so did cool. all the youth things. <laughs> did all the calling, you know, as teacher, priest, um, deacon. Yeah. So, wow. Seminary, I guess. Seminary, guess. yeah. Graduated four years of seminary. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And uh, just good, active Mormon boy. And yeah. Did you always want to go on a mission? There was a time when I thought, no, I don't want to go on a mission. And uh, But then I changed my mind, and I was called to the Brazil North Mission. Uh, had your brother served, or were you yes. the oldest? Yep. Um, one went to Germany, one went to Austria. And were you the youngest? I was the youngest. Oh. So I thought, well, I'm going to go to a German-speaking mission. <laughs> so I took three years of German in high school and <laughs> got called to a Portuguese, Portuguese mission. Portuguese-speaking. <laughs> and so where were you called? In, which Brazil North. It? Now, is that, I know the word, or the city, Recife. Uh, was it that, was, that was uh, one of the areas in the mission. It oh. was from Rio South. Or excuse me, real yeah, north. north. Yeah. Okay, that whole the area. The Amazon. Yep. Wow, beautiful country. Beautiful country. Is it? Beautiful people. Well, I started out asking uh, about the blacks and teaching them, and this was in the 1970s before President Kimball came out with his thing in 1978. Right. So tell right. us a little bit about that experience. Well, when I was in the MTC, they says make sure you have pictures of your family so that when you're out proselyting, you can show people your family pictures. And so I snuck a couple of my girlfriend pictures in, you know, <laughs> with Cindy. And when we would go um, knocking on doors, we would be invited in and would spread our pictures out on the table or the floor. And we'd say, well, this is my mom and dad, this is my uncle, these are my brothers, you know, this is my girlfriend, you know. And that enticed the Brazilian people. They just loved to show their family pictures. So they would get their pictures, they'd spread them out on the floor or a table and say, yeah, well, here's my brother, here's my uncle, you know, this is my family. And we were trained that if you saw anything that looked like the lineage of Cain, <laughs> then you couldn't proceed oh, and teach them. Oh my goodness. Because blacks could not hold a priesthood. I thought you were doing Families Are Forever here. No. So no. you were actually identifying if they had if they the had lineage, had lineage of Cain. Of what yeah. we call the lineage of Cain. Right. Oh right. my goodness. And so if we found something, we'd say, well, who's this? Well, that's my, that's my uncle on my husband's side, and this is uh, my, my sister. And 
Then the first time my training missionary says, okay, folded everything up and gave him a card and says, here's the address to the church. This is what time church starts. We'd like to see you there. And we'd get up and So you'd leave. invite them to church, but you wouldn't teach them anymore. No. You'd just stop the discussion. And you yep. did that at the very beginning. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, never it was, it was I, difficult. I'd never heard of that. There were so <clears> many <throat> families that uh, could have been baptized that... Did you feel We assumed little... they had the lineage. Yeah. Yeah, you didn't want to ask them. Right. Are you... From the curse of Cain or anything, but right. did you feel deceptive or did you feel that sense of... I felt that we were cheating them out of salvation Sure. because of that. And judging them for yeah. sure. Yeah. Oh, well, Short of doing any DNA testing, which wasn't available back then. Right. But yeah, My it goodness. was heartbreaking. And this was in the early 70s. Yeah, 73, 75-ish. So when 78 comes along? I had a child. Uh, Cindy and I were married in Yaddo Falls Temple. We had one child at the time. And when that revelation came out that blacks could not hold the priesthood, I told Cindy I would give anything to go down to Brazil, find those people that we couldn't teach, and I teach them. Teach them. Yeah. I guess maybe it's fair to ask, what do you think of all that now? <laughs> well, I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, to, to go truth, back and To yeah. go back, yeah. Yeah. And what we found out. Oh, shoot. But as Cindy mentioned, you, you were so active and you were busy active and she, she mentioned you were in the bishop break in Oklahoma. And yeah, there was, just, I was called to be a financial clerk. Then I was called to be the clerk. Um, executive secretary, elders quorum president, and member of the bishopric all within like three months, <laughs> three, four months. You must have, they must have thought a lot of you. To, or to I ask that. him, am, am I doing something wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Not staying in any calling very long. That's right. <laughs> But it was our whole, it's our it was your whole life, right? It was I mean, the my church. whole life. Like Cindy said, your decisions, your raising children, what you teach them, your whole life is built around right. the church. Had you run into any Christians yourself over the years? Oh yeah, uh, especially in Oklahoma, mm -hmm. um, a lot of Christians, a lot of Baptists. Yeah. And when people would find out we're Mormons, they would just kind of say, "Oh, turn their back and walk away," because yeah. they didn't want to have anything to do with this. And did you did you feel a camaraderie with them as Christians, or how some did you? Some of them we did. Yeah. Even more so than some church members. No. <laughs> so interesting. Anything else happen on your mission that you recall that was either no questionable or anything? Nothing on my mission. You know, oh. it was just teach and preach and baptize. Yeah. You know, maybe I'm repeating this too much in my thing, but I didn't really feel at all that I was representing Jesus. Well, I felt like I was representing Jesus, but I wasn't teaching Jesus much on my mission. I no, felt like I was teaching prophets and church, and we weren't even doing and... Families Are Forever. That wasn't even quite the focus back then. At least it wasn't for me, but it was more about the church, the Book of Mormon, the priesthood, and... You and know, the so first on. vision, yeah, you know, definitely a lot the of first that. Vision. You know, yeah. is it, did you feel the same way? Yeah. You know, I felt that, you know, what we were teaching was true. Well, sure. Did you feel like you were teaching Jesus, though? I mean, maybe you were. Um, I think we were. Because oh, yeah? um, if we came upon a door that, you know, had a Jewish um, insignia, it would say we have a message from the Messiah. Oh, really? Because <laughs> if we said Jesus, it kick us, you know, off the porch. Yeah. So we we learned to see what was on the house to yeah. use our different door approaches. It almost seemed to me that our big in, at least in Denmark, was that we were American. That was almost more of a, because we, the first thing we used to do at the beginning was talk about the World's Fair that was in New York and that kind of stuff. So we, we used ways of kind of getting their attention as opposed to saying we're here from the representing Jesus or anything it was more about. Yeah, anyway, we, we played a lot of street soccer with the kids to get you know, them interested, but yeah. nothing ever happened with them. 
Okay, well, so kind of getting back into your story and journey, I suppose, uh, Cindy did illuminate a few things, but so tell us your perspective of well, what was going on. They were studying together, and I was dutifully reading the Book of Mormon. <laughs> um, I think I had read it, um, listening to it on tape and reading at the same time in about eight or nine days. I mean, I was just, and this was in 2017, I probably read the Book of Mormon seven to eight, nine times. Wow. And I was in it to win it. Yeah. Um, but they were discussing these things, and she approached me and says, I'd like you to read these essays. And I looked at her and says, it's about church history, right? And she says, yeah. And she said, I know everything about church history, so I don't want to waste my time on that. And then she said, okay. She didn't push me or anything, and I, I went off. And then I started thinking, why, I wonder why she's wanted me to do that. So I actually, for the first time in my life, went to the internet and looked up something about church history on the internet hmm. that wasn't approved. <laughs> and I ran across an essay by Grant Palmer, not an essay, but a video, uh, My Aha Moments, Researching Church History. Hmm. I thought, okay. I'll read that. Now, he was an institute director. Yeah. So, so what could go wrong with that? Yeah, that's I why. I didn't know much about him at the time. Yeah, I had, the one reason I read his book was because he was an institute director and certainly shouldn't be anti-Mormon. So. Right. And so I watched that hour and 22-minute video, and when I finished, I was on my way out of the church. What, what struck you? The first vision. You know, there was four to six different versions of the first vision. And it seemed like they just kept getting grander and grander and grander. <laughs> and um, as I taught in Brazil, you know, that he had the breastplate, the ermine thumb, yeah. translating the Book of Mormon. All the images showed, you know, Joseph running his finger across. But he actually used a hat and a rock that he found digging a well. That was shocking. That was big. And yeah. that was included in this Grant Palmer's yeah. presentation. Yeah, and there were several other things that he talked about. Um, I think Blacks was one of them yeah. with the priesthood. Well, and going back to the Book of Mormon, I'd always understood that Joseph couldn't move to the next words until he got the previous words right. Right. So when I and saw even the, with the looking in a hat, um, if it wasn't right, it wouldn't change right. until he got it right. Until he got it right. Right, and then he would go on. So had you ever heard that the Book of Mormon was different from 1830 to today? No. I hadn't Never either. heard. I hadn't either. I probably know more church history now than when I did. Even with all was, your studying and yeah. all the reading of the Book of Mormon? Yeah. Uh, what do you, the appeal of the Book of Mormon to a Christian, what would it be to, a, to a, maybe a Christian that isn't really well grounded in the Bible? What's the appeal? I think the appeal of, of the church, the way the missionaries teach it, is families forever. Okay, yeah, I agree so with that. So we set the hook with that and then teach about the church and really not much about the the gospel it's right. just teaching the church and about joseph smith's vision and and repentance so and then the book of mormon has a lot of references to jesus or to jesus christ yeah. and but really no doctrine no no mormon doctrine right. in there at all but um but just but has jesus in there intermixed with things and right yeah, it's just interesting, isn't it? And here we are, and as Cindy mentioned too, here we are just years and years in the church and all the study and things that we did and, and we still don't know very much. Yeah, when we started, after that, that Grant Palmer video, I went to her and says, what's going on? And she says, you need to read the essays now. <laughs> and so I, I started reading the essays, and I just couldn't believe what I was reading. 
that it was completely different from what the church was teaching. Mm. And there was a moment when you um, you were actually working on a temple recommend or something. You right. hadn't had one for a year or two or something. Right. You went to get a telescope. So about that. I I had devised this plan because Cindy went to the temple all the time and she didn't want to go alone. Okay. She just felt bad, be, and and the way people would look at her, you know, if your husband's where's not Dave? there, yeah, where's Dave at? And so, I devised a plan that I was going to surprise her after church one day. So she came in, and I says, "I'm going to go ahead and get my temple recommends, so uh, you don't have to uh, go alone." And she kind of sat back like this and says you might want to hold off on that. <laughs> and that's when I really started delving into the history is when she explained what she had found. Uh, what did you learn in the, in the essays? Do you have any particular major ones that kind of struck you? Just that with all the essays, what the church is teaching is not what is represented in the essays. Yeah. It was just completely different. Have you found many Mormons reading those essays, or do you, have you had any sense of that? My two brothers, um, they said, one has been a bishop, and he says, I've read the essays. There's, I don't see anything wrong with them. Mm -hmm. And so what I think they do is they read the little snippet, but they don't go through the entire essay because the way the church has it set up, they're kind of hard to find on LDS. First of all, they're hard to find. Yeah, yeah. really hard to find on LDS.org. Right. But then when you find them, it kind of gives you a little overview, <laughs> but then you have to click read more and then delve into the footnotes. Uh, into the footnotes. And that's where it really shows the, yeah. the differences in the teaching. Yeah. Well, gosh. Um, now, had you taken other classes? I mean, did you take an institute or seminary? Uh, at, at Rick's College, I did. Did you? Yeah. Anything there Sellers, ever he, come up? he was a great, no, nothing ever came up. Yeah. Interesting. Never. Wow. And now, Cindy mentioned her relationship with Jesus from the very from the beginning. Do you remember, or to, do you now recall, of course, it hasn't been that long, but... What was your relationship kind of with Jesus as, as a Mormon? Um, that he was my eldest brother. Okay. And that Satan was our brother too, but That's he right. actually fell off the deep end. <laughs> um, but he was he was there for us when we, we needed him. Yeah. You know, and we were working on becoming gods too, trying to do everything that was right. Oh, uh, it's, it's such an interesting perspective that we are able to do that, or that we even yeah. think that we can, kind of makes us real proud and, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when, when uh, we finally got down to the nitty gritty and, our, I mean, it shattered our lives. Yeah reading and finding out all this information. Um, many tearful nights, many agonizing conversations, and we decided we better let our family know what's going on. Spencer knew because he was sure. actually the one that showed <laughs> us the way out. Right. And we'll forever, you know, <laughs> thank him for that. But uh, to come to the realization that what we had grown up in was not what we had been taught. Did you share this with then with your brothers? Were your folks still around? No, both our parents are, are gone. But were you able to share with your brothers? Yeah, I was able to, I wrote them an email because hmm. I was excited because of the sure. information that I found. Sure. And um, that didn't go over too well. <laughs> And uh, we still talk occasionally, but not that much. Um, but when we told our oldest son, he looked at us and says, well, what took you so long? I knew it wasn't true at the age of 14. Oh my goodness. And he says, well, why didn't you tell us? <laughs> he says, you wouldn't you have believed wouldn't me. You wouldn't have believed me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then our daughter, you know, bless her heart, 
we base I basically just threw up all the information oh. onto her lap, and without, she said, "Well, yeah, no more." Without no more. preparation, yeah. that's probably my biggest regret is that I didn't bring the kids along as I was learning things. And she had actually said that, "Why didn't you let me know? Why didn't you bring yeah. me along with it?" Yeah, she did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so after we told her is when we actually um, resigned from the church. Mm. And when was that? Just That was March 23rd of 2018. Just, just less than a year ago. So we're not quite a year out. And baby Christians. Baby Christians. Cindy said. Yeah. And I feel the same way. We've been out now seven years, eight years, and uh, still learning and trying to deconstruct some of that Mormon thinking and you know and sometimes that's kind of hard isn't it yeah I was in a Bible study class um, at our church and they were talking about Adam and Eve and I says oh yeah and started mentioning you know the dialogue that I had learned <laughs> you know from like the temple yeah. and the pastor kind of looks at me looks at his Bible and <laughs> and Cindy says that. that might be from the other one <laughs> So yeah, we're, we've been deconstructing yeah. a lot of information. Well, uh, was there a moment that you just finally, I mean, it sounds like you've had a couple of aha moments, as it were, but uh, was that kind of your born again moment, if you'd say that? Uh, um, well, Cindy mentioned that everything came crashing down. Yeah. And it, it did, it really did. We didn't know. In fact, there was a, a, a period of time when I thought, well, you know, if the Book of Mormon isn't true, what about the Bible? Mm. And then I just kept reading, reading, reading the Bible. And, you know, rumor has it that about 60% of the people that leave the LDS Church become agnostic or atheist. Is it that high? Yeah. I don't. I didn't know that. Because but I know you're in the true church. It's tough. So if you leave, there's what else is there? Well, this is what I admire about you and the other people that I've interviewed. Is that's our whole message, is that there is hope after Mormonism. Yeah. 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 So while we're standing in that rubble, um, we, I tell tell people that we grabbed our hands and we went through this together, and when the dust settled. Um, Christ was standing next to us. Oh, wow. And we knew that we were going to follow Christ. Uh, that's a great message. You're married for time and all eternity. Did you deal with that a little bit? Um, I think that was a question my daughter mentioned to me. Yeah. What about our eternal family? Yeah. So. How did you feel? Or how did you answer that in your own mind? You anyway? know, everything was going so fast that night. I can't remember how I answered it. I probably answered it incorrectly. Poorly. <laughs> yeah, poorly. <laughs> we do get excited, and, and they do think. they And sometimes we come across too uh, vivacious, or whatever you want to say. Yeah. But really the message is when you kind of sit back and think about it, it's such a simple, beautiful message that we're trying to share, right? Right. Um, yeah. You know, and I love my my kids so much, and we don't want to hurt them in any way. No. We still go to um, priesthood ordinations, baptisms. Um, we support the family in that. Uh, that's wonderful, and I think that's important not to to be Christ-like. I mean, that's what Jesus would do. I think right. show love, and but maybe be able to plant seeds along the way. Yeah. At least the good news. I know the the bad news is kind of like you were saying. Right. No, no, because you can get filled up pretty quickly with. And having bad. and I think a different Jesus than what the Mormon Church has. Um, it's Jesus now is more complete for us. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah, expand on that a little bit. Jesus is complete. Mm. Um, <clears throat> it always seemed like Christ in the Mormon church was more or less kind of an Aaron boy. I felt that in the temple. Yeah. Particularly. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think they've taken that out now. <gasps> Have they? With this new... The new recent change? Yeah, the back and forth 
dialogue is gone with mm -hmm. Michael and Jehovah. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. They took 20 minutes out. And God doesn't change, does he? Nope. <laughs> No, uh, but Christ. Oh, I hadn't heard that one. I'd heard a couple of things about women not having to veil their faces yeah. and a couple of things, but uh, wow. Yep. That's a big one. Yeah. Yeah, I always felt funny about that. Uh, and, and then Jesus, again, like you said, our elder brother, but he was just going to kind of be there at the end when I really needed him. Right. You know, if you can work hard, give that 70, 80, 90 percent, he's going to make up that difference. Yeah. And then we found out what grace was. The had meaning you never of grace. understood grace I had as never a Mormon? never understood grace. Never. And it took me quite a while to understand grace after we left, you know, what that really meant, that I didn't have to work or merit his grace. It was given to us freely yeah and and it's such a beautiful message yeah yeah it's thrilling it is yeah and when we resigned one of the first things I wanted to do was get a cross well I see your cross there it's beautiful and this was a big one for the the front room of our home <laughs> and so we went to a, a, a store we got a cross I hung it then I had to to get one to wear because this is where it happened it happened on the cross yeah and, and I'm sure you've read that scripture now in <clears throat> in the Bible where it talks or in Corinthians I think or first Corinthians first Corinthians 117 116 or 116 about the preaching but of don't the cross hold me on is, that. <laughs> yeah preaching of the cross is foolishness to those that are perishing right yeah 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 well, Dave, we're gonna, going to have a little second interview or next interview with you and Cindy and just kind of banter around a little bit, some more topics and so okay. on. But I sure appreciate your well, appreciate sharing. appreciate you guys. And, well, and it's, it's so nice. I mean, you, you were so committed to the church. It was your whole life. And, uh, but God, you were willing to let God in. I mean, I know it's God that does that. But there has to be some some thought process on your side that says, you know, I'm, I'm willing to turn my life to Jesus and, yeah. and accept his, his gift. Yeah, the hardest thing was to walk away, to push that resign button. I pushed Cindy's, she pushed mine. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that's how so, you do yeah. that, but. Um, and the easiest thing was to come to Christ. Well, thanks for sharing your story. Well, thank you. We'll see you next time here on the X Mormon Files.